Hey there, this is Brian Jackson, Ableton Certified Trainer from Brooklyn, New York, and author of the Music Producer Survival Guide, Chaos, Creativity, and Career in Independent and Electronic Music. I offer private lessons, coaching, consulting, and mastering services. Check the description for more info. Room and headphone correction software is great, but comes with some workflow challenges. This video is specifically about Ableton Live and Sonarworks Sound ID Reference, but the concepts will apply to other monitoring plugins such as IK Multimedia Arc, Slate VSX, Waves NX, Redline Monitor, or Deer VR Monitor, to name a few. And the concepts can be applied in DAW such as Logic or Pro Tools, which do not offer the ability to load plugins only for monitoring via some sort of dedicated control room feature. This tutorial does not show you how to use Sound ID Reference other than setting it up in Ableton Live. So what problem am I solving here? The most basic way to use your speaker or headphone calibration or reference software is to put it on the master track. But if we do put it on the master track here, we do have to always remember to disable it before we export. And in live, if we're using the resampling feature, we also don't want to record the calibration into our audio file, because then it would be double calibrated when we play it back through the calibration software. So we really don't want to have this on the master track. And there's another thing. Um, let's see what happens when I go to export. So I'm gonna export this. And you see we get this pop-up here that is telling us that we didn't bypass the plugin. Now, this is really nice, and it's good that it reminds us, but it is pretty annoying because if I forgot, then I would have to go ahead, turn it off, and uh, do it again. So there is a simple solution to this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set up what's known as a listen bus. So I am going to delete this off of my master track. And we're gonna look at a couple different ways of doing this in this video. And then in a part two, I'm gonna show you some more advanced workflows for more complex projects and templates. So here on this track, which I label not good listen bus, uh, the first part is how we're gonna do the good one. And what we're gonna do is we're going to choose the master as our input from the audio from, and then we're going to pick pre effects. And I'll explain why in a second and we wanna set our monitor to in, and now we're gonna set our audio to external out one two. And so this would bypass the master and uh, allow us to just go directly out this way. But uh, there's one more step. I have to go to here and mute the master track with the utility so that we're not double monitoring. And then that is why we are using pre-effects so we're getting the audio from the master track before we mute the output of that track. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And so far so good. Everything is doing what we want. I do not see any level here, which is to be expected since this is muted. But what happens if I go to solo something? So if I solo this track, now it mutes the output from this track and now we're in the solo management game. In a small project like this, it might not seem like a big deal that we have to deal with managing solos. But if you have a very large project with a lot of tracks and a lot of complex routing going on, this will slow you down a lot. So let's look at how to do this a better way. And so I'm gonna hide this one up, open up the good listen bus. And actually, if you look here, the first part is exactly the same. Master, pre-effects, pre and we'd set our monitor to in and we'd also still put the utility on the master track to mute it. So here is the difference. On here, I'm using the external audio effect set to audio one, two, instead of the audio two chooser. I'm using sends only, which is a way to basically turn off the channel output other than if we were using sends. And we're not even using these right now, but in theory we could. And the idea here is that if I solo something, the audio is leaving the channel via the external audio effect before it gets to the channel fader. So what that means is we do not have to worry about solo management madness. Uh, important point is I'm not choosing anything to come back in here. We're using this just to leave the channel and then leave live to go to our audio interface. 
Now there's one little finer point I do want to talk about, and that has to do with the fact that you might have a significant volume difference when you go back to just listening through the master. So let's say I did want to export, which I would just export out through the master, and I can set this to off. I'll turn this off here. Actually, I'll leave this like this. And I'll just turn this off. So we're not getting anything, which is fine. And then I would unmute this. Now this could jump up quite a bit because the calibration itself is going to be boosting different frequencies and cutting different ones. But this software gives us a safe headroom feature, which I do leave enabled. And so this is turning this down by five decibels. To make up for that, I just add five decibels here with a limiter. And uh, that way, when I go between the calibrated and uncalibrated outputs, I'm not hearing a big jump in volumes. I should also quickly mention that, of course, you are hearing my room specific calibration. And so things sounded a little weird on your end. That is because you were hearing the calibration for my room and not for your room or your headphones. So let's go ahead and export out our mix. So I'm going to leave this off here, go to the master, make sure I'm unmuted. And now when I go to export, we really don't care about this anymore. We can just ignore it. And if we want, we could even choose don't show this again. I happen to leave it on just in case I made some weird mistake, but you can just turn this off now and you're all good to go. In part two, we're gonna use an audio interface with multiple stereo outputs, and also we'll look at more complex setups in general. If you wanna see me set up any of these workflows in Logic or Pro Tools, just let me know in the comments, and if enough people are interested, I will definitely do those. If you appreciated the content in this video, please share, like, and subscribe.